Hello everyone, it's Alex, and uh, I am currently in a hotel room in London because I came. Um, I was over at Dan's in Cambridge for the last couple of days, and then came down to London with London with him because he was on his going on his way through to go to his parents' house. Obviously, I wasn't gonna keep sleeping on his couch, and I'm gonna meet up with Mike at uh, Paddington Station tomorrow. So I just grabbed a hotel room for one night. And that was kind of cool because it means I got to, you know, hang out in London for a night. If you're getting kind of like some background noise, it's because the room was really, really hot. And like I turned the radiator all the way down before I went out for dinner and my play. And it's still really freaking hot. So I opened the window with the aid of the trash can. There it is. Because <laughs> uh, it won't stay open on its own. Um, so that's kind of the deal with uh, where I'm at right now and you know again you know as always my lighting is terrible but you know it's not like this is a professional thing I'm a fucking writer not a not any kind of video person um so I made sure I went and had some Indian food um some Punjabi food and it was super tasty I had something that I'd never had before which is a thing that I still cannot pronounce because I'm terrible but it was like a paneer dish with bell peppers and some other stuff in it. It was really, really good. And then I went to down to the Donmar Warehouse to see the play that they're currently showing, just because, um, like, w whenever I'm here and I've got time and I think I can see a play, like, the two places I immediately check are the Globe and the Donmar, because you can often get really cheap tickets for standing room. Like, I mean, obviously being a groundling at the, at the Globe is a thing, um, I think I lost, yeah, I lost my groundling button off my laptop bag at some point, but, um, in the Don Mar Alta will do, like, 10 pound standing only tickets, which apparently some people who are even just going to a play at the Don Mar don't realize that, because, like, I was standing where I was supposed to be standing behind, um, the, the two rows in the circle, and the lady I was standing behind turned around and got, like, really, like, Oh, are, you, are you going to be there the whole time? And I was like, yeah. And she just kind of like gave me this nasty face and I was like, I've got a standing ticket. So yeah, I get to be here. You know, I promise I'm not going to breathe into your hair because I'm not gross. So anyway, um, the play was interesting. I mean, I'm still thinking about it even after I walked home or when I walked back to the hotel, I obviously did not walk home. That would be a really long walk. But I walked back to the hotel from the Donmar, which was like two and a half miles, which was maybe not the smartest idea I've had, but I needed the exercise and it was, it's really nice out and it was cool. I walked down like Oxford Street the whole way and um, like, it's interesting how you just start seeing shops repeating after a while. And I, you know, I was only on Oxford Street for maybe like, a mile and a half or you know maybe but it was less than two miles and there's all these like American candy stores which is kind of hilarious and I even saw there's like two unique lows I passed by and a couple of H&Ms and all that so it after a while you start feeling like you know the matrix is glitching or something because you keep seeing the same shops over and over but it was you know it's pretty and there's lights everywhere and it's you know, it was nice to walk, even if now I feel just like, just a little sad, because I, you know, I've gotten to be in London a bunch before with, with, um, some, some people that I'm not really friends with anymore, so that's kind of like a melancholy thought, but it was still a really great evening anyway. Um, anyway, so I was going to talk about the play, like, and I have gone to, like, three plays at the Donmar now and um I think the only thing that beats the Donmar in in number of plays I've gone to at that theater is the Globe um because I'm a Shakespeare fiend but uh the Donmar obviously well or maybe not obviously but if you know my my sad fan fan history <laughs> and Shakespeare obsession it should come as no surprise that when uh Tom Hiddleston was playing Coriolanus at the Donmar, I went, like, um, I actually arranged things so that I could be over here to go, and I think I went, like, two times, maybe three, I don't remember at this point, but, I mean, it was really great, and that's that, you know, I always joke, like, Tom Hiddleston could make me give a shit about, like, 
if, if he was playing a garbage can full of turds, he would still be able to make me care about it because he made me, like, give a shit about Coriolanus, which, considering my feelings on that character, is pretty impressive. So, you know, good actor and all that. And, um, like, I noticed then that the, the sound design was really interesting. Um, and some of the stuff they did with the sets was kind of like... Uh, that this thing with chairs that I wasn't didn't necessarily get I'll, I'll like po I'll like link to the thing I wrote about it um when I saw it um but like the sound design then was interesting and then before I saw Coriolanus I saw oh god I will look it up and and put it in the notes um, it was called like a like a kitchen play it was I just remember it was from some playwright in the north and I didn't really get it and it was really long and it just kind of involved a lot of people standing in a kitchen and talking um but it was like not really my thing but it was interesting to have seen it and of course the actors were great because the Donmar always feels good people I was just mostly like I'm not sure what's going on with this play and it was not the most exciting thing and I was jet lagged and then so today's play is Belleville by em um not Emily Amy Herzog um and let's see I and I will I will tell you who was in the play because there were only four actors it's it's a very small cast and they were all really really good let's see it was James Norton Imogen Poots I hope that's the right way to say her last name if you see this Imogen for some reason I'm sorry uh Faith Alabi and Malachi Kirby and or me I don't know if it's Malachi or Malachi Again, I'm sorry, I'm terrible at this. And I mean, like all of the actors were, were A plus. Um, there was some, some kind of like me identifying with the character issues as in I couldn't, cause it's basically, um, the idea is that uh, James and Imogen play this couple, um, this American couple that's living in Belleville in Paris. And like, um, the dude, uh, Zach is a doctor who is doing some kind of pediatric research and it's like, he was gonna do, get some kind of like good residency and then he gave it up to take a job in Paris because his wife wanted to live, he thought, or, you know, she wanted to be in Paris and you know, there's some stuff to get into later. And then his wife, whose name I can't remember at this point, is like an um, an actress who is now doing, teaching yoga. But, I mean, apparently I'm going to guess she's not that great of a yoga teacher considering when it starts out her yoga class has been canceled because nobody showed up. And to a certain extent, like, um, I, like, the characters... I think they're they're supposed to be about like nine or ten years younger than me and I don't honestly think that it's a like generational issue since that's kind of like you know solidly millennial and I'm like right on the cusp of millennial to me it's like more I could not freaking identify with these characters because they were just sort of like um you know like neurotic middle class people and I've seen a lot of like mileage getting, you know, from characters like that more and more. And I just, I never really connected to them when I was in, in there in my mid to late twenties. And as I move into my mid to late thirties, I really don't connect with it. Cause it's just, you know, it's like, um, neurotic white collar, people like and then particularly what kept weirding me out about this couple was like they keep calling each other homie but like it's it's like super awkward white people calling each other homie so I mean like initially I didn't even quite realize that they were calling each other homie I thought they were like I was sitting there going are, are they calling each other honey and just pronouncing it weird because they they're like having a American accent problem or something and, and then I realized no they're calling each other homie and it's just like, eh? Um, so I'm not sure what was going on with that. Um, and then I like kind of hilariously in the first scene, um, the, the, the girl character, um, 
the the uh, landlord comes in and he is a a black French Muslim. Um, I think it's like he said his family's originally from Senegal and I wasn't entirely clear if he was like born in Senegal and came here young or like just was born in Paris. I miss that. But um, she does like, it, it was actually pretty funny because she basically did all like the stereotypical like awkward American asshole things when you are talking to, you know, a person of color as a white person and a Muslim as someone who is from a Christian dominated country and an American talking to a foreign person and it was just like t ticked all the boxes and I was just sitting there going oh my god it, she's so American oh it's painful painfully American and I actually mumbled pain you know like my head in my hands like painfully American and the lady next to me was just laughing her head off when she heard that um though otherwise I kept quiet because I didn't want like the scary lady in front of me to murder me so I mean I didn't really have any kind of identity have much identification with any of the characters as such though I mean the 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 landlord and his wife were pretty cool um but what I did find really interesting about the play is um I guess weirdly because of seeing the last Jedi Jedi I've been thinking about the idea of like um audience viewpoint character or like who at a given time the you know, particularly in, in like a play or movie who you're kind of supposed to be sympathizing with or who the script is assuming you're going to be sympathizing with and ways that that gets played with. Because obviously in The Last Jedi, particularly when um, Admiral Holdo comes on scene, okay, apparently I'm just going to wave a pen around, sorry. Um, obviously, at, at, you're supposed to be kind of like seeing it from Poe's viewpoint. He's supposed to be the audience identification character in that. And playing with that expectation of him being like, oh, that's that's not what I expected from Admiral Holdo. And some other stuff about audience expectations with how they view char female characters like, that look like Holdo. That means, you know, Rian Johnson got to do some, some, give that a real twist that I thought was interesting. And, you know, I can go on about Admiral Holdo forever. But that was kind of on my mind when I saw this play. And it really feels like um, at the beginning of the play, you're very much like, I, I feel like the, the audience sympathy and identification is supposed to be with, Je with Zach. Because when you start out, like his wife is a total and neurotic mess and she does like the, oh my God, she's so like stereotypically American things and all that. Whereas he's like a cool dude who's just kind of like getting along with his, um, his landlord, like on a social level. And, you know, he's learned how to speak French and he's doing like all the right things that that she has not managed to do because she's a neurotic mess. And then he's kind of like, oh, well, she's a neurotic mess because she decided to drop off her meds because she's I think she he said she was like on antidepressants and anti anxiety or something like that. Because like her mom died in five years ago and she just has like never gotten over it. And that was like a big thing. So it's it's very like very plain. I think at the start that that we're kind of looking at her through Zach's eyes and and oh haha ha, like isn't she neurotic and and we're supposed to be trusting him because he seems like the guy you know like the stable guy who's kind of like taking care of the neurotic yoga instructor lady who is like stereotypically yoga instructor lady um and you know I guess at this point I'm going to spoil Belleville if you really care but you find out as the play goes on, like, immediately, the, the thing that actually struck me as, ha like, something wasn't right was when I noticed, like, um, like, the, the, the wife, I feel so bad that I have forgotten her name, you know, um, she, but they keep calling each other homies, so I don't know each other, their fucking names, um, but... She ha she's like super close to her dad, I I'm, I'm guessing in the wake of her mom dying. And like her sister's gonna have a baby, so she's like really anxious about that and wanting to, you know, be available for him to call at all hours of the day and everything. And the thing that starts happening really early on is that Zach keeps taking her phone and not giving it to her when she asks for it. Which, you know, like initially you're like, oh, okay, you know, especially in, at one point she's, like, super drunk, so maybe he's holding on to her phone because he doesn't want her drunk calling people because she'll just feel bad about it later, et cetera, et cetera. But, I mean, I think that is where, like, maybe one part of the generational thing that I really did identify with is that 
having control of someone's phone is is a big deal and not giving it to them when they ask for it is a big deal because it's like you're basically taking control of their life in a certain way so to me that was like the 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 number one clue that like there is something wrong with with the the character that's kind of supposed to be our viewpoint character and then you start finding out like basically Zach owes the landlord all this money he owes four months of rent and he was like oh well it's just because like she went and did all this shopping and then um and then he spends a lot of time lying to his wife about what's going on and you start seeing more and more that he's just been gaslighting this woman and lying to her and you know building like a, you know this illusion of control that that is reinforced by the fact that he's like taking care of her because she is a neurotic mess and taking her phone and shit like that and then ultimately find out that he never actually graduated from med school and that's why they didn't go to his graduation his excuse was he had the job so they couldn't go to the ceremony but it's literally that he didn't graduate and then um so he doesn't actually have a job which is why there is no money and he's basically been lying to her this entire time about like their whole life together and who he is and what he's doing and he's he's been pretending to have an assistant so when he wants his assistant to call he like calls himself with skype on his laptop you know shit like that which is i mean if nothing else it's an interesting use of technology and it's you know, good to see that getting incorporated more and more in the weird, creepy ways people use it. But, um, you know, you start seeing more and more that, that of course, like, the, the, the wife character is not the most reliable narrator, but in ways she's much, much more reliable than Zach, who you, you know is lying constantly and has been lying to her constantly. And then at the end when she catches him and because he has to tell her like they're getting kicked out of the apartment because you know that he owes the landlord four months of rent and his co and broke into his landlord's apartment looking for weed a plus dude there um but then he he goes on this big spiel about how like well he lied to her but it's you know it's all he's just trying to do what she wants and he's just trying to make her happy and all that and i found her response to it kind of weird like, her big thing was, like, um, how am I supposed to love you when you have no core? Which is interesting. But it, it's, it's just that sort of reversal of, like, you know, initially you think that he's, like, the one that you can trust. And then it turns out that if you can trust any of the characters other than the landlord and his wife, because they actually have their shit together, um, it's, it's the lady that we've we've been told is you know oh she must be unreliable because she's like dropping off of her meds and all of that so it's it's just it's an interesting play from that perspective and it was really 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 well acted it just had like you know i just could not identify with the main characters at all because i was just like you know enjoy your bohemian lifestyle in Paris, I guess, and your small wedding, just 150 people. Like, I mean, I can see, you know, the commentary that was being made about like sort of uh, marriages falling apart and marriages being made hastily because you can't, you start really, really realizing that she kind of married Zach just because she was in a super bad place because her mom was dying and things like that. So, I mean, there, there's like some chewy emotional stuff in there, but at the same time, it's, it's also just like, you know, at least surficially rich or surficially middle-class people that I was just kind of like, God, you know, I wish I had time to have these kind of problems. <laughs> though, I mean, the ending is quite like, mm. um, Though I, I wish I did speak some French because like the last scene is entirely in French and I think I kind of understood what was going on, but I don't know entirely. So anyway, that's just what I was thinking about and um, I am going to do a little bit of writing and I'm going to finish reading the book because um, I'm, I'm still reading The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet right now and I've got like one day before it gets returned to the library so I need to finish it. So um... I will talk to you later and uh, let me know if you've seen any 
cool plays recently. 